my mind. What the Lord has done. Hey. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It is my pleasure. It is a privilege. This is my spiritual son from North Carolina. I spoke into it like when he was a teenager. He was going to preach the gospel. He is now pastor of three churches in North Carolina. Hallelujah. He's the city councilor of Elizabeth City, North Carolina. He's a mortician with mortician. Oh, and he's on limousine service. Amen. So it's my pleasure today to have him here to bring a word in this place. Receive what Brother Oshia Tay told him. Speak, Lord. The Bosha. Receive the man of God. So he introduced the song and presented of a lot of them. Elder Darius J. Cole. Amen. This is the man of God.
just for about 30 seconds as we stand all over this place just to get to lift your hands. Let's speak in the atmosphere as we stand all over this place. Come on, with your hands lifted up, just begin to speak in the atmosphere. God is moving. Whatever you need, you ought to speak it in the atmosphere right now. Come on, come on, for 30 seconds, just muster up a worship in you. Come on, just muster up a worship.
Hallelujah. As we stand all over this place, we divide with your hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Surely we do honor God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, right. Jesus. You see my glory, but you don't know my story. Hey. All the things that I've been through just to get here today. My God, my God. But my worship. My worship is for real. We greet you this afternoon. In the name of he who was before there was and he who will be but was and were our God. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The one who sits on the right hand of the Father. Making intercession for us. Grandmama had it right when she said, if it had not been for the Lord, who was on our side, where would I be? When the wicked, even my enemies, came up against me to eat of my flesh, they stumbled and fall. Amen. Certainly, let's celebrate my spiritual father, the angel of God. Amen. But I'm here today. Amen, somebody. How many know you don't just show people love on a certain day of the year? Hello, somebody. You ought to show people love every day. Because love is not love until you give it away. And love is not what love is. Love is what love does. Amen, somebody. And we're here to show love. Certainly to Lady Joanne Harold. Come on, let's bless God. Let's show all of them love. Amen. Certainly the Lord is doing miraculous things in this place. And from the last time I've been here until now, we certainly can see that the hand of God is definitely on this ministry. And we thank God for what God is doing. Can you say amen? amen. To the right old church family that came with us. Amen. Come on, let's help celebrate. All the other ministers, the assistant pastor, amen to everyone. Amen. We bless God for you to lot it out in everybody. So all those that protocol, all those I don't know to call. It's just good to be here. Can you say amen on this bright Sunday? Amen. If I don't preach today, it's not because I don't want to. Amen. But in the words of my dad, I'm not going to be long. I'm just going to be strong. Amen. Amen. Let us go to the word of God. The Synoptic Gospel of Luke, the 19th chapter. Luke chapter 19. Beginning reading at verse number 30. Amen. Luke chapter 19, verse 30. I tell you, there's a sweet spirit in this place. Yes. And we know it to be the Spirit of the Lord. Luke, the 19th chapter, and the 30th verse. If you have it, say amen. amen. If you don't have it, say wait for me. All right, we're going to wait, amen. Luke, Luke 19, verse number 30. Amen. Luke 19 and verse number 30. If you don't have it now, we'll see you where? Sunday school. Oh, bless the Lord. As the word of the Lord says, Luke 19, verse 30. Saying, go ye into the village over against you, in that which at you enter you shall find a whole tie, whereon never man sat, loose him and bring him hither. And if any man asks you, why do you lose him, thus shall you say unto him, because the Lord has need of him. 
And they that were sent with their way and found even as he had said unto them. And as they were loosing the coat, the owner said thereof said unto them, Why loose ye the coat? And they said, The Lord have need of him. And they brought him to Jesus and they cast their garments upon the coat. And they set Jesus thereon. And as he went, they spread their clothes in the way, and when he was come nigh, even now the descent of Mount Olives, the whole multitudes of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works they had seen, saying, Blessed be the King that cometh in the name of the Lord. Uh -huh. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. Uh -huh. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones, the rocks, would immediately cry out. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you this, that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. God, we thank you now for the reading and the declaration of your publicly read word. God, I admit that I've studied, but I need your strength. I'm educated, but I need your touch. Now, Spirit of the living God, everything we've talked about privately, reveal it openly. Have your way in this place. Move by your power divine. Heal, set free, and deliver now. In the name of Jesus, and the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Before you take your seat, that 40th verse says, And he answered and said unto them, I tell you this, if these should hold their peace, then the stones would immediately cry out. Look at your neighbor, grab him by the hand and put a smile on your face and say, Neighbor, neighbor. oh neighbor, oh, speak, now. speak now, or forever hold your peace. Oh, or look at another neighbor and say, Neighbor, neighbor. Speak, now. speak now, or forever. Sisters, I want to let you know. Every now and then in life, we find ourselves dealing with occasions when we know that we have a need, we have a right, we have a responsibility to speak. We have a responsibility to say something about the current situation. And oftentimes, my brothers and sisters, there are people that find themselves knowing that they should have said something. And they don't say nothing at all. Oftentimes, when we see things going on in our community, we see things going on in our neighborhood, and we know we should speak up. We know we should say something. But sometimes, because we get a little scared of what what might happen. We get a little fearful of what somebody may do to us. We decide to sit there and not say nothing at all. Oftentimes, my brothers, when you look at the ability to speak, you'll begin to understand there is a certain window of opportunity to speak. In other words, if you don't speak at that moment, if you decide to speak later, your speaking would be in vain. I'm going to go somewhere this morning. My brothers and sisters, there is a time, there is a place for us to speak. But if we don't take opportunity to speak, we will lose our speaking power. When I begin to think about speak now, I begin to think about the traditional component of marriage. And those of you that have walked down the aisle realize as you stand in front of a man or woman of God, they will begin to ask a question in the midst of the ceremony. And the question is if there's anyone that knows any reason why these two should not be joined together, let them speak now or forever hold their peace. Brothers and sisters, I've been at some weddings where people would begin to Needs. Somebody would begin to move some paper and people would get worried because they would know that there was 
some stuff that they could have been brought to the forefront, but because nobody took the time to speak, everything kept on going. I want to let you know today, my brothers and sisters, it's time for the body of Christ to speak. Y'all ain't going to have to hear. It's time for the body of Christ to stop just sitting there, looking like we've been sucking on sour lemons, sitting there, looking like the God we serve is dead, but it's time for us to get up and speak and tell how the good God has been. You ought to look at your neighbor and say, this is your time to speak. This ain't your time to look cute. This ain't your time to look pretty. This ain't your time to boast about the biggest fish you caught. It, it's not your time to brag about your degrees. It's not your time to talk about how much money you got. It's not no time for you to sit there looking like you all that in a bag of chips when you realize you short of a happy meal. This is your time to get up and declare the goodness of the Lord. I wish I had a witness in here that knows that right now is the time. Not next week, not next month, not next year, but now is the time to speak up for the goodness of the Lord. You ought to nudge your neighbor and say it's time to speak. There are some people that are so bougie, they are so sophisticated, they're so educated that they think they are exempt from giving God praise. But last time I read the word of God, the Bible said, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Let everything you ought to touch your neighbor and say, that means you. You owe God praise. God don't owe you nothing, but you owe God everything. My brother and sister, it bothers me when I go to some of these churches. I go to some of these churches and people act like you gotta pump them to praise God. You gotta prime them to praise God. You gotta push to praise God. But really when you look back over your life and you see how good God has been to you every now and then something on the inside ought to kick up on the outside. Every now and then you ought to find your hands getting light. You ought to find your feet getting light. And you ought to give God praise because if it had not been for the Lord on your side, you ought to touch your neighbor and say, I know he's right. That's why I But if I gotta praise God all by myself, I'm gonna lift up my hands toward heaven and I'm gonna say, Lord, I just wanna thank you for where you brought me from. I wanna thank you for where you've taken me to. You wanna look at your neighbor and say, I praise him all by myself. See, you let me help you here. You can't understand my breakthrough till you know I've been through. But baby, when you've been through hell and high water, every now and then you ought to lift your hands toward heaven. In the Gospel of Luke, and we find this very familiar passage of Scripture in which we talk about here now, we talk about Palm Sunday, and we talk about the triumphant entry of Jesus. We talk about Jesus as he entered into Jerusalem on the final leg of his ministry on earth. And his arrival now sparked considerable interest since the Sanhedrin Council had concluded that he must die. Yes. And as a result of increasingly attraction and persuasive miracles and people begin to begin to hate on the ministry of Jesus. They begin to plot on him to kill him. And now he begins to prepare for his triumphant entry. Touch your neighbor say he was prepared. My brothers and sisters, as Jesus was prepared, the Bible said, he told them to go out and get an ass. He told them to go out and get a donkey and said that if anybody asks you why you're doing what you're doing, tell them that the Lord has need of it. Can I help somebody? Every now and then in the body of Christ, you ought to tell people the reason I'm doing what I'm doing is because God has a need for me. Too many we find people will focus on what you used to do. They'll focus on your past. They'll focus on your mess up. But can I tell you something? God never consults your past to determine your future. As a matter of fact, as I'm in this church today, everybody is an ex 
something. And the only way you're not an ex on is what if you steal something. But thanks be unto God that can take our black heart, dip it in his red blood, and we'll come out white as snow. You ought to touch your neighbor and say, I know it's right. Tash it. Now Jesus tells them, listen, if anybody asks you what's going on, tell them the Lord. Somebody say the Lord. The Lord has need of this dog. And here it is now as Jesus begins to make his way, the people were excited. Uh -huh. What happened to the church being excited? Uh -huh. Y'all ain't going to help me up again. Uh -huh. What happened to the people of God to get excited? 